Uh, he spent 22 years at Y-12, the National Security Complex. He spent six years at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And in that period of time, he won four awards for outstanding performance. Uh, in 1994, he left Oak Ridge National Laboratory to found Quadricizer Corporation. And I'm going to let him tell the story as to why he left a very secure job where he was revered in order to found a company that he is not only founder of, but president and CEO of. But this is not the whole story of Larry Bohannon because he is not only inventor and industrial designer, he's also a technical illustrator, a sculptor, a graphic designer, and a magician. He has, with his magical abilities, performed shows in countries all over the world. So we're very grateful to welcome this particular portion of Larry Bohannon's great skills today as he discusses creating robots to help individuals with disabilities. Larry Bohannon. Thank you, Dr. Litterman and UT Science Forum for inviting me to come. I want to uh, share with you how I invent, invented the quadricizer and why. Now we're ready to go. Well, I want to thank Dr. Letterman and Amanda and all of y'all for inviting me uh, to come. I'll tell you a little bit about my background and why I invented the robot and how it's helping a lot of people. Uh, creating robots to help people with a disability. The quadricizer robotic rehabilitation therapy system is not just a robot, but it's a system. Uh, movement, it moves all four limbs in multiple directions. And if you can see that picture, a person can go any direction uh, you want them to go. <clears throat> and I did work 22 years at Oak Ridge Y-12 plant. And what I did there was I helped scientists engineers with their inventions and patents. And I did the same thing another six years at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Uh, I helped, but I also, I did that same thing, but I also helped transfer technology to the private sector. I worked with the smartest people on planet Earth. Um, Gordon Fee, top right, he was an amazing man. But you know, these were brilliant people, and I don't think I ever heard them say, I can't. It was always, I can't. And Gordon Fee would call me at 2 a.m. in the morning, and he would say, Larry, I need this by seven. And that meant five hours. I had to get up, get out of bed, get to work, and have it in his office in five hours. Um, because it was always I can. They always had I can. Uh, even Clyde Hopkins, he was president and CEO before Gordon Fee. And he asked me to do, he knew I did magic shows. He said, would you do 10 magic shows uh, to hire, to encourage supervisors to hire the able disabled. And um, I did a lot of magic shows, magic with a message. I was really having a good time. I did probably 200 safety programs using my magic to encourage people to be safe. And uh, I did uh, several shows each year for um, Carbide Children's Party. There were 8,000 students or family members that would come. But I've on the outside, I went to Malaysia, Singapore. This was a pretty amazing trip. I went all over Singapore and Malaysia doing magic shows in schools and uh, other gatherings. And I also went to India in the year 2000. That's when Clinton said it's the most dangerous place on planet Earth. I almost didn't go, but I always heard take chances. And I had the most fun going into the schools, just enjoying my life. Uh, doing things that God, are crazy please. things. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I was really enjoying life, but then tragedy struck. Now, in your life, when tragedy strikes, what do you do? Well, you try to find meaning in life, but it, it's really hard to find meaning when it's your dad. My dad had, he was 85, had several mini strokes and then a massive stroke. He couldn't move. 
and Gan Green set up, and Dr. Kropelak at Fort Sanders said, Larry, in seven days, we're going to amputate his foot. I said, now, wait a minute. Isn't there something I can do? I panicked. And he said, well, Larry, he just lays there. He can't move. I said, well, I'm going to go move him. He needs circulation is what he said. So I went to move him, but realized he was so stiff, I couldn't move him. So I built this contraption in a weekend, believe it or not. My employee said, don't call it a contraption but it really looked like Rube Goldberg. It had clothes hangers and, but did you know it moved all four limbs in a 15 RPM with just perfect speed. And uh, he opened his eyes for the first time in two days is what his caregiver said. And he'd look at me and look at that machine like, boy, what are you doing to me? And Dr. Kropolek said, Larry, you need to be careful about a, a red streak going up his leg. Well, his leg, uh, if you could look at his leg on the left, it's really uh, kind of a gray, uh, green, and pretty black. The one on the right is just pink. That's 24 days later. When I first started it, I could see blood vessels popping up on his foot. So I knew something was going on. It created circulation. Now this, my cousin had broke his neck on a motorcycle. He said, Larry, is there any way you can get my hands up there? He couldn't even move a finger. He couldn't move his arms. I said, well, maybe. It took me six months to build that one. You can, that's what it looks like. It did move his feet back and forth. And his, I had to make bandanas for his hands. It took his hands up and down. And nine days after he started using it, his cowboy hat blew off and he caught it. He hadn't moved in 11 years. That's when I knew I had something. I didn't know what. I couldn't figure out why it was doing that until I met Dr. Brucker, University of Miami. He said, Larry, I can tell you why it's doing what it's doing. He said, when you first learn to ride a bicycle, you don't know how, but your neurons start sending signals to the limbs. And he said, pretty soon you're balancing yourself. He said, you never forget, unless you have a brain injury, a stroke. And when you damage your neuron, it's gone forever. You can never repair it but you can replace it, but you gotta send those signals again. The problem with most people, they're, when they have a stroke on this side, this goes down and they never move it. Well, another doctor said it takes two to 400 repetitive motions for your neuron to pick it up. And the quadricizer does about 630 minutes. So we have people that hadn't opened their hand in 15 years, in 30 minutes, they'll open their hand and they'll scream. And I had one man that raised his hands over his head. His wife said, Larry, that's the first time in 26 years. See, I didn't know I had what I had. The Oak Ridge National Lab usually wins eight or 10 uh, R&D 100 awards every year. And it's only 100 give out worldwide. And they nominated the quadricizer one year. And they said this was a shoe in. They thought I would win, but I called, um, it, it was a country, uh, they said I didn't win because I didn't have clinical data studies. And that's what I'd really like to get, some clinical data studies. While I was working at the Ridge, I was trying to transfer technology to the private sector. And we had six robots, and I picked this one to build a display or kiosk and take it to Washington, D.C. and display it, encouraging people to, it was interactive too. Um, Kind of like, I hope the science museum that uh, uh, Jim Clayton and Michelle's donated $150 million to build. That is gonna be awesome. It'll have things like this in it. But anyway, uh, while I was there in Washington, DC, one of my friends called and he said, uh, Larry, you need to attend the, it's called IRMA. It only happens once every four or five years and it's physical medicine rehabilitation. And it, what it is, is I, I had an extra day, I took vacation and I went, uh, and it cost $125 to go, but it was amazing. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because I met all these physical medicine rehabilitation doctors who I really needed to talk to. And I was sitting at a table at one group and they just kept talking about this one doctor. He was uh, pretty amazing. And uh, he was talking, uh, he gave four papers uh, one was on uh, stroke, head injury, um, spasticity, uh, adult pediatric. You know, it was just perfect for my quadricizer. 
And I thought, man, boy, I'd like to meet that doctor, Dr. Jeffrey Hick. Well, he's in Tennessee. And I got to meet him, and he's been a super The last helper. 10 years have become a decade of the brain. It's been a time of great expansion of our knowledge of how the nervous system is organized. One interesting thing uh, that I've seen, as, as we've discussed with the um, use of the treadmill, the biofeedback, uh, repetitive motion seems to improve recovery. I've seen that also with the uh, quadricizing device. Uh, a limb that's moved through uh, pattern motions passively, and it, uh, somehow uh, recovery seems to occur. Well, it's my feeling that these things don't make the recovery occur, but that the nervous system has created the pathways that will allow muscles to use, but they're not used. And by moving the limb through these pattern series of, of motions, and uh, and indeed, actually, I've been very excited about how uh, the inventor of this machine has listened to professionals, physicians, and therapists about the kind of patterns that appear to be helpful to facilitate recovery. These are reproduced uh, with machines. And the one thing also I've been very excited about with these uh, newer uh, techniques for reciprocal motion and cross the patterns is that uh, patient can start off with passive exercise, and then as things improve, they're able to get somewhat more control. They can work uh, with the movements where they weren't, they wouldn't be able to lift the limb against gravity alone. They, they can use whatever muscle power they have and, and work through the movements, or they get stronger even resist the movements and build strength of the muscles antagonist or opposite of the motion. After listening to several doctors and therapists, I decided to quit my job at Oak Ridge National Lab. And for the past 25 years, or I've been listening to doctors and therapists and in, you know, rebuilding the quadricizer. I just keep getting ideas. And um, my mother's had dementia. She was going into where's mama, where's papa. Somebody's got my baby. I did not know what, how to handle it because the ladies at Kelper came to me and said they was going to quit. Well, it's hard to get somebody to take care of two people like my mother and dad. And uh, she was moaning, uh, and she was also going, where's mama, where's papa, somebody's got my baby. I said, let's put her on the quadricizer, maybe she'll quit moaning. Well, she quit all that, you know, crazy talk. And I took her back to her doctor, Dr. V.J. Jeff and Donnie. He said, Larry, it's brilliant. It's getting oxygen to the brain. See, I never even thought about that. And she was acting like she was 10 years ago started to recognize the grandkids and everything else. And here's what Dr. Jeff and Donnie said on ABC News. The medical director of the Senior Dynamics Unit at Baptist Hospital is impressed. He calling Larry Bohannon the right brother of rehab. So yeah, I think that is as exciting as I would compare rehab medicine to therapy. He says the quadricizer has already dramatically helped some of his patients, including a stroke victim, who could once barely move. My feet are real heavy because I'm in a wheelchair and it just makes you feel like they're much lighter and uh, a lot of pain will go away. It's a motorized machine designed to improve circulation and muscle tone by moving the patient's limbs without putting stress on the joint. And basically she couldn't move out of her wheelchair and is now on her feet. She uh, transfers herself by herself to the bathroom. The doctor envisions these machines in hospitals and rehab centers across the country. Now I've got my grandson. He's a doctor in physical therapy. He's going to explain a little bit more technical about these other uh, quadricizers or uh, other robotic machines. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? I'm Blake. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about robot assisted gate therapy and some of the machines that can be used to accomplish it and why we should care, basically. So there was a systematic review in 2017 by NAM et al. that found that robot-assisted gait training was more effective than traditional therapy for improving functional mobility-related outcomes in patients who have had a spinal cord injury. This is probably because they can produce simulated walking and accumulate much more mass practice than would be possible 
through uh, use of normal therapy techniques, which would just be a therapist or family member helping the person to move through the right motor patterns as they gait train. And so one of the problems with traditional therapy is that the burden on the caregiver and the therapist is immense when you're working with a spinal cord or traumatic brain injury or a patient who has had a stroke because they can't contribute a lot to the training sometimes. Uh, depending on what's involved, you are having to do a lot of the work for them. And that's where these robotic assisted gait training devices can come in and produce a lot of those repetitions that you need to relearn a movement. So the reason this is really important is because when we've had a brain injury and part of the brain has been injured, uh, like my grandfather was saying, that part can never be repaired, but it can be replaced via something called neuroplasticity. And this is the idea that the brain can utilize other parts of the brain to learn the functions that have been lost by the damaged portion. And the way that this happens is with a lot of repetitions of moving through the right movement patterns and it activates central pattern generators and the brain is able to relearn that movement using a different part of the brain. So some of the machines that can do this are the Locomat is maybe the most common one I've seen in research. And there are some other companies that make these, but they're all very pretty similar. They traditionally have a treadmill on the bottom, the patient is hoisted, and then there's a device or the robotic part of the machine that moves their legs through the proper gait pattern so that their brain can get a lot of reps in and try and relearn how to walk. Um, just a couple more examples. Uh, like I said, they're all pretty similar. One of the big limitations with these is that if someone is very involved, like their upper extremities are also very spastic in addition to their lower extremities, sometimes people are too involved to get into a machine like this. And we need something that is even less invasive that they can get into easier. Quadricizer tends to be a little bit easier for people that are very involved to use. And so that's one cool thing about it. Um, also, these are pretty cost prohibitive. So a lot of people would benefit from robot assisted gait therapy but the cost kind of puts a barrier that keeps a lot of people that would benefit from this therapy from being able to use it. Because it's just not that common that every rehab center that people would get to go to with a stroke or something like that has this kind of machinery. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Larry. Thank you, Blake. Dr. Blake, can't you imagine how proud I am? And this is another exoskeleton. I've seen this. And once you get to a place where you can do a little bit on your own, uh, they slip this suit on and uh, it helps people to walk. It keeps them stable. Now this is another one, uh, they do the arm. And, um, but I, this is a little bit funny now, okay? Um, I started using a quadricizer by myself, mainly because this little boy in the red, he's three years old, one of my grandsons. Uh, he said, mama, is papa gonna have a baby? And you know what I did? I was pretty hefty. I don't like to show this next picture, but I'm going to show it anyway. Um, I got on the quadricizer and lost 20 pounds in two months, and then I lost another eight pounds. So I lost 28 pounds in about four or five months. And now I can do things. I couldn't do that 20 years ago. See, that's been 17 years ago. I couldn't do what I'm about to show you uh, 20 years ago. At age 76, Larry Bohannon braved the frigid waters at the Eskimo Escapade this past weekend by water ski. So how is it possible to have a man at this age with an subject? We will share the secret at the end of this video. This event aims to raise money and awareness for the Patricia Neal IRC, the Dream Connection, and the Adventure Amputee Camp. So how did this man at 76 years old still able to water ski? The secret to his sauce is the quadricycle. Larry Bohannon uses the robotic rehabilitation therapy system for 30 minutes every morning. I feel like I'm 30, Larry Larry. Through the use of robotic technology, Larry is able to maintain his health and youthfulness. I usually get up on that little board, but now I, I just did this this summer. I am 78 years old, but I don't feel like it. And I want to share with you. Um, 
I carry that little stool on my shoulder and then I stand up. But I've been doing this for quite a few years after I started using the quadricizer. I'm just saying everybody needs to exercise. I do that 30 minutes every day and listen to about two books. And, and this is my next bucket list. I decided not to go off. I believe I can do it right now, but I decided I'd better wait. I didn't want to do this program with a cast on my arms or someplace. Anyway, uh, our goal was to develop a robotic rehabilitation therapy system that would accommodate any physical or mental disability and so we could track clinical goals. And this next video is going to show you, we take people that's in comas even, fragile people, very fragile, using a quadricizer. The quadricizer robotic therapy system is a multifunctional medical tool that can help individuals continue to receive therapeutic movement that can help avoid illnesses such as pneumonia. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention advises that certain people are more likely to get sick with pneumonia, including adults 65 years of age or older. According to the Association of Professionals in Infection Control, when healthcare providers urge you to get up and walk around, it's not just your muscles they want to work. Taking deep breaths and moving around as much as you can can also help reduce your chances of acquiring pneumonia. As you can tell, in order to decrease your risk of pneumonia, you should continue exercising daily and more importantly, as you get older. The quadricizer is truly a game changer for individuals who have little to no movement by gently exercising individuals in a continuous passive motion. We also added a, uh, it's virtual reality to the iPad because we're playing with people's brains. It's so important that they see what, what's going on. And these people, a lot of times they can't talk, can't communicate, maybe just blinking their eyes, but they really know what's going on. And so we had developed um, an iPad with, uh, you can ride a horse, you can ride a railroad train, or you can go down the, in, through the woods on the beach. It gives a simulation, and this is really important. Now, I, I sold one to Heinz VA in Chicago about 26 years ago, and they've ordered two more. They ordered another one just recently, and uh, they said it's the best piece of equipment they have. Um, I'm hoping that we can get more in. Now the locomat is, when I got there, they somebody had just bought them a locomat. Of course, locomat's pretty expensive. Not everybody can get one. I know the VA bought eight of these locomats and uh, I sell more to individuals, but uh, it's really an amazing what this can do. The local mat's geared for a certain group of people, and I think it's made really, really well. It's made in uh, Switzerland, and uh, of course, we, we're made in America. And we do say the quadricizer interrupts this spiral, downward spiral of debility. We're a game changer because it helps people immediately. Uh, we've got them all over the world. We've got them in India, Hawaii. I mean, well, yeah, we've got them in Hawaii, Saudi Arabia. Nairobi, Kenya, Australia, Canada, and Mexico. And um, I was called uh, in to bring a quadricizer to New Jersey because they were flying their spiritual leader. This is Swami Bapa, uh, his doctor. This is his doctor in the white and his physical therapist in the black. They said, would you bring a quadricizer to New Jersey? Our spiritual leader's flying in, very fragile, 95, four years old. And I said, absolutely. And we need you to stay 14 days. I said, well, I can't stay 14 days. They said, don't you know who this is? I, I really didn't. Um, I ended up staying six days. Hundreds of thousands worship Swami Bapa. He's an awesome person. Um, anyway, it, it really helped him while he was in New Jersey. But when he flew back to India a year later, he's not doing well. He's got the quadricizer. And, uh, so they asked me if they could fly me over there. So I went for a couple of weeks and it was amazing. I would, there was 2000 people would come in the morning and 2000 afternoon. And then I would go back and work with him each time. So I had about 16 sessions with him in the last session. They bring me up on stage and give me gifts and put a wreath around my neck. I said, I know how a racehorse feels. Anyway, it was pretty amazing to get that kind of treatment. Um, he, what they did, they had 12 balls. He threw 12 balls and he could barely move when I got there. 
That's the reason the quadricizer helps any disability just about. I delivered one to Billy Graham about uh, 10 years ago. And when he got off of it, it, he said, this makes me believe I'm gonna walk again. He did stand up and his nurse and therapist said, look how straight he's standing. And with a walker, he was walking. Um, he had already been walking, but he felt much better. And they said it really helped him make it to his 95th birthday. And I said, if you count conception, he lived to be 100. I also had some friends to call me and said, Larry, I had delivered one to Pat Boone's grandson who had fallen 40 feet through a skylight. He was six foot four, um, captain of the basketball team, class president, Mr. Everything. But he was in a coma, in a coma for seven months, intensive rehab for a year and a half. Well, when I flipped, turned on the TV station, I was watching Pat Boone. And he said, don't go away. The best is yet to come. And it was all about the quadricizer. I said, I couldn't pay for that kind of advertisement. But what it did, it reconnected the pathways to his brain. And that's what he was saying on TV. His therapy center has 15 quadricizers. They ordered another one, the 16th one, uh, right before the pandemic. But then they shut them down so they couldn't use it. And so uh, that one's on hold, I guess. They don't, these are not patients. They call them students because they're always improving. Now I'm gonna let you hear Mark Desma. Well, my name is Mark Desma and I'm director here at High Hopes. Uh, we're the first brain injury program in the United States and we love these quadricizer machines. Uh, as you can see, we have more than a few of them. Uh, we're the first brain injury program in the country to provide uh, desperately needed services to hundreds of people that need help. And this particular machine is great for teaching people how to take steps for the first time. Uh, we're working on arm extension. Uh, we've been using the machines now for a few years and we're very thankful for them. But the students know when their next class is for the conditioning, they know they're gonna be on the class side the first. So come in a little early and park their wheelchair to, so they get their spot. On the class side, we've seen, I mean, numerous physical improvement on it. They love it, they get on the machine and they're ready to, for the next day. They're ready to go on it again. They just, they, they love the machine. Personally, I think it's great for us that work here because it's taken a lot of load off of uh, physically having to do all the patterning ourselves. I also delivered one. I went to a, a, a convention, Fort Lauderdale, Florida is a brain injury convention. And uh, somebody said, if you can meet Dr. Neubauer, you're in. He's famous all over the world. He came by the booth. He said, can you come to my clinic after the convention? I'd like to try some of my patients on it. When this patient gets off of it, he takes all three of my machines that I had at the convention. He ran the Recoverable Brain Center and it was amazing. He said, Larry, I just want stock in your company. He said, when you pump oxygen into the body, this oxygen needs direction and the quadricizer gives it direction. It pumps oxygen to the brain. See, all of this, I didn't know. I'm not that smart. Now, Blake understands it, Dr. Blake Bohannon, but and Dr. Neubauer said, Larry, I've got somebody that you need to call. This was a few years later. And he said, he's 95 years old and he wants you to call him right now. He wants you to bring him a quadricizer. It was Edward Teller. I didn't realize Edward Teller is the one that invented the hydrogen bomb. And I he built Los Alamos laboratory. And uh, he was even with Einstein when they signed the Manhattan project. Uh, anyway, uh, at that time, Einstein was 60 years old and Edward Teller 30, but he said, I want you to come and bring me a quadricizer and show me how to use it. But he, he passed away that year before I could get it to him. I was really disappointed. But I just want to show you how fragile people are that use it. I delivered one to a man, 88 years old in Canada, very famous guy like these other people. He was just barely could move but it really helped him to get going where he was walking. And, um, but in 18 months, he got the H1N1 virus and they had to put him in the hospital. And he was, he got pneumonia while he was in there. Now I'm gonna read you what, this is what the, uh, the, his medical team wrote me. It said, because of mobility, the quadricizer, it was taken into the hospital suite and used by the patient with assistance on a daily basis. The positive movement cleared the pneumonia without complications and the patient was returned home. And they said the therapeutic value of this device in establishing a patient's resilience cannot be overstated. 
It is a true asset in reducing hospital stays and providing enhanced quality of life within its ease of use. Patient compliance is never a problem. I just feel like that it could help. I wish we could get a study on somebody that has test positive and see if we can't get them over pneumonia. See, pneumonia happens not just with a virus. And uh, this is president of the Stroke Club in Knoxville. I want to show you what he did. The stroke left him unable to walk for 10 long years until now. They had told me when I was in the hospital that I'd probably never walk again, that I'd never work again, and that I'd never drive a car again or anything like that. But he came into my office without a cane with his driver's license the first time in 13 years. Now, we wanted to set it up so a child could use it, and that's one thing that Dr. Neubauer just kept calling me. Finally, I did. And we've got one. Uh, we donated two quadricizers to James Madison University, and they put them in the Rockingham school system. The grammar school and middle school used these quadricizers, and uh, they was going to move the one out of the middle school to the high school. And there was two 13-year-old boys. They would go out to the bus and wheel six extremely disabled children in and feed them breakfast, go to place, come back, and uh, work with them. Well, they're going to lose that quadricizer. And look what the news said. Our veteran and their community, WHSB, Ms. Mo Rosales, shared how they raised $20,000 to help their school as well as others. This quadricizer is on loan from James Madison University to Montevideo Middle School. It's all part of a program that helps students with disabilities get some physical activity. But it's also so much more than that. These kids are in a wheelchair their whole entire day. And just to get out and be on the machine is like liberating for them. It may seem like just a fancy gym machine, but these teens say it changes lives. But what's fantastic about the quadricizer is that it's like having four therapists working on a student at the same time, making it very efficient. I feel so happy to see them smiling and having a great time in the machine and just, it's their favorite part of the day. Since this $20,000 machine could be taken back at any moment, Sam and Patrick stepped in. They're our age, and I mean, they're us, they're human, there's nothing different. They just have a disability that limits them from the activities that we can do. And this is their activities that are similar to ours. During the winter, Patrick broke his leg and got a brief look at what it means to be immobile. And I'm like, well, this is them every day. So I got to experience what it's really like in their eyes. And that was very eye-opening. And that's why it was even more important for us to raise this money. This only pushed them to work harder. After speaking before Rotary and Alliance clubs for nearly a year, they raised a total of $17,000. And after doing it again today, they've reached their goal. Now the school can get its own machine in as little as a week. In Rockingham County, Isabel Rosales, WHSB. I delivered the quadricizer, but I don't believe there's a dry in the house. This is, uh, if you remember, uh, an Amish school shooting many years ago where five little girls were shot and killed and one was shot through both sides of the brain. They bring her home to die, but she didn't. She went to a therapy center, had a quadricizer, and, uh, and she started looking around, focusing on people. Well, the father called me and said they wanted to purchase one. The Amish elders voted to let him have a generator. And uh, she outgrew it. It was just amazing the results that we saw. She outgrew it. We put it in he said, I'm going to give that one to the Amish Children's School and buy her another one. And they bought another one. We helped those little kids and her feet straightened up in one session. Now, this is amazing, this next picture. I want you to look at how, the, how this little girl comes alive on the quadricycle. Do you want to get in the quadricycle? Yeah. Are you ready, Sierra? Yeah. Okay. On your mark. Does she like this? She does. She's going to stay going. On your mark, get set. Yeah. Good job, girl. We've seen improvements in their speech. We've seen improvements um, in their bowel function. We've seen improvements in their ability to attend to the, the lectures, not the lectures, but the classroom activities that they're doing when they're learning. Um, we definitely see improvements of decreased spasticity and the kids with CP. They, um, their limbs are more relaxed.
for more ease. Their gate training abilities um, look better. Their their actual the quality of the gate is, has improved after they have been on there. Um, and I think their readiness to learn is you know that really helps. They they're having some movement, and then you go to try to teach them something, they are more attentive to what we're trying to teach them, and the more they participate. I think it would be wonderful to have more quadricizers in our schools. I've seen incre increased alertness, uh, mobility for the kids, and, and just interaction. Um, it seems to be that uh, the more that they're involved with the quadricizer on a consistent basis, that they interact and engage more with you and seem happier in general to be a part of their social uh, setting and group. The quadricizer interrupts all of this downward spiral of debility and they, people that use it say there's no plateau in sight. And I finished exactly on time. So if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.